welcome to Betsy, the Wonder Bus. We are building her for a homeless family. She's a 40-foot long school bus. We got her from Grants Pass. She has roughly 126,000 miles on her, and she'll go a million, so come on inside. Betsy is the culmination of a dream. Literally, I had a dream about a bus when I was doing a project as a journalist about homelessness on the West Coast, a growing and dramatic problem, especially for children. I met a family, Lilith and her children, and they were living on a school bus, homeless, and they wanted to fix their bus up to make it a wonderful little home for themselves. She had lost her husband, and uh, she couldn't work because she had a lot of small children. And um, they wound up losing their their home, their bus, because uh, she wasn't able to really fix it up like this one. And she subsequently lost custody of her children. I cannot live with that. I can't think about a family suffering like that and not do something. And I'm not qualified to do this. There's nothing in my background that makes me the guy to do this. I don't build houses. I'm not handy. I'm not particularly... I have no engineering skills. I have no particular talent, except I just needed to do something. And this dream literally happened in the night of making a schoolie, but with detail and care, a schoolie that had bathrooms and kitchens and beds for children to spread out on and lighting so they could read before bed, do their homework, a place where their parents could cook food for them, healthy, good, organic food that we have in such abundance here on the West Coast. My name is David. This is my wife, Jennifer. Uh, this is Rayleigh back here. You just took pictures of Noah in the car. And this is the private. We call him the private. That has a whole story to itself. but. Um, the thing that kind of broke our back was just with Jennifer being sick and us not being able to make as much income because of that. Uh, yes, that was a situation where you had a hard time handling utilities and rent and the different expenses that you normally have. And the know, baby. And the baby. And having to be there. Yeah, the baby had just been born in August of last year. We were out in June, and so it was kind of a shock. We didn't expect it to happen at all, so it was pretty much all of a sudden. You know, we were uh, facing that. Um, Not enough to get in anywhere, so it just was basically camping for the summer. And then living in the car from then, because it was cold and the campgrounds closed down. So. Yeah. And how are your backs after sleeping in the car for so many weeks? My back is shot. <laughs> it's going to be nice to be, be able to stretch, but it's, it's okay. Yeah, with, with Jenna Lee, it's her back, and with me, it's more like not being able to put your feet up, so you don't get to properly drain all the fluids and things, so it, it kind of is hard on your, on your legs and your ankles. I was researching homelessness actually at the time on the coast of Oregon, so I was embedded for a month um, talking to homeless people. And when I came back from that trip, I went up to Grants Pass and I bought Betsy for $5,000. I reached out to other people who make homes out of school buses and started to talk to them online. And then I reached out for money to build a bus, even though I literally can barely swing a hammer myself. And... Um, I wrote a blog about it, and this woman I'd never met who lives in Michigan emailed me and said, uh, I want to help you make your dream come true. And she sent us a check for $25,000. And since then, I've been working with builders and creating this home, and now we have a family who will move in just before the Thanksgiving holiday. This is a wood-burning stove. Uh, I have many people ask me, why a wood-burning stove? They're really important on schoolies because schoolies are made of metal, and even though this bus is fully insulated, like wrapped in foam insulation, they still can trap moisture, and so you use a wood-burning stove to keep that moisture out and keep the mold and mildew down. And here's a table that the children can eat at and do homework, and it folds down, and so do the chairs, so you can have extra space if you want, um, just for children to play. 
This couch is actually uh, not finished, but this couch uh, has a fold-up area, so again, you can store things. Storage is very important in a schoolie. It's roughly 240 square feet, so you need as much storage as you can get. We were really proud of this piece. It's a um, complete kitchen. Uh, we bought these cabinets new and uh, a nice deep sink for the family because we believe that cooking and the kitchen is the heart of any home. So we wanted it to have a good heart. Um, and then a full size range and oven. And then uh, as we walk through, you see that we have a full size refrigerator as well. Again, the same theme, we want healthy meals for our children and families and this helps them do that. And then this area, it becomes the bedroom for the children. Um, we have two bunk beds. Uh, the bunk beds have a little uh, piece here that you can lift up and they can store their, you know, personal things, their underwear and socks and things like that. We built in a um, bookcase for the children to store their books and their homework material. And then this is a uh, family closet and it's got uh, places where you can hang things and then additional storage here. And then as we walk through, um, you'll see that this is a work in progress, literally. But we have a full-size shower in here, um, and it will have a uh, gray water tank underneath, so families can take a nice shower in the morning before school and work. Um, and this little door here, this little pocket door, when you open it, if you look in here, it's not finished yet either, but this has a, um, will have a toilet, a flush toilet in it for the family so that they don't have to Right now, uh, homeless families have to look around for public restrooms to use, and this puts an end to that. So that's very, very important for a family. And then this is the master bedroom. Um, you can fit a full-size bed in it, uh, wrap around uh, windows. Underneath the bed is uh, a large area, and that's a additional storage. So you can put Rubbermaid bins and things under the bed to store things, and additionally, the power box is under there and that will be wired uh, up to a plug on the outside so literally all you have to do is take uh, a plug plug in the bus to a power pole at an RV park and your your full lights and uh, your computers run and your heat and everything else so that uh, that's pretty much the tour 240 square feet uh, very well thought out living space we looked at a lot of designs and uh, this is the one that most families use and we feel real comfortable with it and our family is quite excited. I love this bus. We have always sang as a family, uh, we all live in the Yellow Submarine. And uh, one of their favorite songs is the wheels on the bus go round and round. And so it just seemed kind of uh, fortuitous that this happened for us. I never could have imagined living in a bus or, or, or getting a bus even, what, three or four or five months ago. And it's just kind of amazing. That's wonderful. I'm excited. I can't wait to lay down and stretch my feet out, finally, after 11, 10 weeks in a car, so it's going to be nice to be able to at least lay down. The way it works is that you can live on the bus rent-free for one year. We sign an agreement. We check on you every month and make sure that the bus is in good condition and that you're living up to that agreement. And then after a year's time, if bus life is for you and you want this to be your forever home, then you can enter a buyer's program. And it's a three-year mortgage process where you can have an interest-free loan through the organization. And then you own the bus and it's your home. Well, Julie has offered for that to happen. And, I want the bus. I want yes. to buy the bus. Yes, I like it. I would love it. This, I like living on the road, so I think it would be fun. So I want to. Yeah, I definitely agree.